Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. So, Peter, um, back in July, when um, Kamala Harris was inserted into the uh, slot of uh, the nominee, presidential nominee of the Democratic Party, it was assumed that um, she would have a great deal of appeal to um, Blacks, to um, Hispanics, um, because she was a woman of color. You know, she was you know black. She's Indian, and she thought that the the the, the people who did the inserting, which namely you know Barack Obama, uh, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, the people who just run the party who and who just simply ignore completely uh, the, the views of the voters, they said, oh, well, she will obviously be far more popular than uh, Joe Biden. And Joe Biden kind of bitterly complained, but, you know, he was told to, you know, shuffle off the stage, old man. Um, but now, well, suddenly... you know, that, yeah, it, but that's like assuming, you know, it's like, so let's say a Haitian American um, uh, is presented with a, a Korean woman nominees. I mean, do Haitians and <laughs> Koreans... You know, again, this is, this is soft bigotry. It's this yeah. is really weird. I mean, very, why yes. do you assume yes. that people of color are are instantly gravitating to other people, <laughs> people of, of color? color. Exactly that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, when I lived in Southern California, they were there were Nigerians I met, you know, law school, dental school, engineers, and they just couldn't comprehend American blacks. No. Okay. They just, no, that's, I don't we, I, we don't have anything to do with them, okay? That's, that's, just that's, to, I'm totally oblivious. Okay. Yes, they yeah. just, and, and and just because of the pigment of my skin, you think I'm, we're all like each other? It really, the, the Nigerians are just like, you Americans are, you know, loop, loopy about this. Right. No, that's a, that's a very good point. And of course, uh, and it's even stronger when it comes to Indians naturally gravitate towards Blacks. Blacks naturally uh, gravitate towards Hispanics. It's manifestly untrue. Mm -hmm. um, really? <laughs> and, and, but anyway, that was like, that was an idea. Now the problem is that as they, these uh, party leaders have been studying the polls, and they're suddenly finding that the polls are not moving in the way that they had assumed uh, that they would move. In the meantime, of course, Joe Biden is sort of rubbing his hands with glee uh, because you know <laughs> it's, it's, oh, hey, I told you that I, I was a good candidate. You didn't listen to me. Um, but anyway, no, the you know the poll the polls which are not going particularly well for Kamala Harris means that um, the party has now brought out the heavyweights to uh, campaign for her. And that's you mean the, the heavyweight known, the, the heavyweight that's the skinny guy. The skin, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's not exactly a heavyweight you would think of. You know, <laughs> if, it was, if it was a boxer, you know, he would be a kind of a middleweight. Uh, he's tall, but he's he definitely feather, be a middleweight. He <laughs> Uh, of so, course, you're referring to Obama Rama drama, as I referred to. That's right, exactly. So um, he was he's been brought out um, to campaign for uh, Kamala, and he went to Michigan, Ooh. and and he went before a black audience, and he let it rip. He let rip, you know, to the blacks that they just weren't good enough. They weren't they weren't doing enough for Kamala. You know, he looked at the polls and he said, "This isn't good enough." Uh, you know what? What? What the hell's the matter with you? Apparently, you know, you you can, you know, if you're black, you know, you can just be the, the leader of the blacks, you know, and and say and lecture them that hey, you're black, I'm black, I have a right to lecture you uh, on how you should vote. Um, this, you know. this is a, a, an exemplar of uh, post-racial thinking, George. That's, that's exactly post-racial. That's right. <laughs> He was supposed to be the post-racial candidate, the right. post-racial po politician. That's and right. what is he default to? That's right. Race. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Um, so here, let me, let me just show you a couple of um, uh, stories about this. And this first, the first story is from a Politico. And, um, and then here we have um, the headline of the Politico story, Obama. Black men have, quote, excuses, unquote, for not supporting Harris. The former president has been hitting the campaign trail to energize the Democratic base. Well, and I mean, why would you need to energize? I mean, isn't it on its face 
isn't her candidacy on its face exciting and makes you feel <laughs> joyful? Right. Exactly. I mean, if it that's doesn't right. make you excited and energized, then that's, why? <laughs> why that's is right. that? And particularly if it's the base, this is the base. I mean, this is the people who want want to vote for you. This is your base. I mean, in the case of, let's say, Trump, you know, his base is excited. They're energized. They will vote. The, with the, the issue with Trump is, well, can he get beyond the base? And that's always been the question. I mean, can he e extend his reach to uh, those who are not part of his base? But here you're trying to energize your base, which is not a good sign. Um, and then Barack Obama is urging black men to step up their support for Kamala Harris. Tell us, step up. You know, what's it's the matter? Again, you know, the the I don't know if there's an awareness of how words are, are taken, but to step up. So he's lecturing them. Yes. You, you, you're you're not you're not um, um, men. You're not right. real men. That's right. Exactly. Step up. You know, and again, I, but, but notice again, he makes this a, an entirely racial thing. He doesn't. He's not saying, "Hey, look. I mean, I, you know, she's got some great policies and great ideas and 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 everything." No, what the hell is the matter with you? You're black. She's black. You need to vote for her. What you know? What what are you doing? You're just sit, sit, sitting uh, uh, on your duff and doing nothing. Um, yeah, you know, George and I are old enough. You know, you know the Catholic vote. You have to vote Catholic. You know, that's right. You have to vote Catholic. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Yeah, <laughs> what's the matter with you? Right, exactly. Okay, this, this is we've seen this all before. I mean, um, 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 all Jews should support a Jewish candidate. Okay? That's right. Well, that's right. Yeah. Um, and um, and then a sign that her campaign is worried about what is typically a reliable demographic for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Referencing reports that support for Harris is lagging among black males. The former president gave what amounted to a scolding as he made an unscheduled stop at a campaign field office in uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, so, George, so there's trouble on the plantation. Scolding. He got a scolding. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is. Um, Was he wearing like a Brooks Brothers suit, you know, <laughs> Italian shoes, <laughs> silk tie? <laughs> You remember when he um, and we we did a we did a podcast about that at his 60th birthday party. This was a real big bash at his um, I think at where where's it? It's um, where's that place he stays in the summer? Um, uh, I think uh, Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard, exactly. Big bash, but this was at the height of COVID and the COVID restrictions. Uh, so there was a little bit of a uh, a problem about that. So he had to scale it back. He didn't cancel the party, but he scaled it back a bit. It wasn't, you know, half of Hollywood and half of, you know, the people in the uh, music industry who were supposed to uh, show up. So it was you know, only only a quarter of Hollywood uh, were invited. Um, and then um, he said, you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. <laughs> because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. So they, they, he's telling you that, hey, there's a, there's a real problem with you men, black men. You know, you've got, a, you've got an issue with women. I, I, the number of times, George, in 2016, you know, you just don't want a woman president. Right. <laughs> I don't want Hillary Clinton. I don't want that woman president. Okay? Oh, no, no, no. It's always this juvenile conflation right. of right. That exactly, um, and that's and that really brings up the the key issue here, which is I think people don't like her, and that was the problem with Hillary Clinton. People did not like her, um, and why don't they like her? Because they see her like as they saw Hillary Clinton, an empty pantsuit. It's just an empty suit. There's nothing. You don't stand for anything. You don't believe in anything. Uh, did, you, 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 did you see the sixty minutes of um, scandal? I, 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 yes, yes, yes. Okay. Or this, uh, this Colbert show. I uh, yeah, I saw a little bit of that. I I, it's, I find Colbert very hard to take. So I just saw that little I mean, clip of her uh, dr drinking. That's the why beer. I let other people do the clips for me. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Um, and you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. 
So you know, they go, so he's doing his. The Biden said when he said in twenty twenty, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Can you imagine? Well, like, it, well, also, uh, well, but what Barack, Barack Obama's doing, he, he's trying to do a remake of two thousand eight mm -hmm. because the, the it was master it devious but it was mm -hmm. master. Right. If you don't vote for Barack Obama, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So black men, if they're, you know, you don't vote for this woman of color. What what is she's Indian and half Indian, half black. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. And, and that's what, and it worked for him. It worked. It, 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 it did work for him. Um, but it's very interesting how he kind of made himself into someone black. Remember, you know, his mother was white. His mother was white. Um, he was brought up by his mother and his grandmother. In other words, he was brought up exclusively by uh, whites. Um, and then he got a, he had an Indonesian stepfather and then he lived in Indonesia. And then suddenly he becomes this ep epitome of the American uh, black, which he never was. Only after after he kind of moved back already as a, as a grown up, he moved to uh, the United States. And because he'd lived in Hawaii, then he lived in Indonesia. And then he came back and so suddenly, oh, well, I, well I'm, I'm black. Um, and, uh, and so again, you know, this is, it, it, this is all kind of fictional. I mean, and, and at the time people kind of wondered, really, I mean, do you really know about the American black experience? I mean, you know, you have a very different kind of experience, a very different background. Well, I mean, I mean, it, depending on how you want to approach it, but I mean, he's half white. Why do you have to say half black? Well, that's the point. Exactly. But, but that's, the, you know, he is half white, but hardly anyone knows that anymore. I mean, people knew it at the time in 2008, but no one just knows that. I mean, he's just assumed always, or he's black. But the fact that they, that he is indeed half white uh, never comes up, and more than you know, and and it's more than that because his father really played no part at all in his in his upbringing. I mean, he, he hardly knew his father. I think he only met him once um, when his father visited um, visited him in Hawaii. He didn't stay very long. He visited him in Hawaii. That was a, just the one meeting he had uh, with his father, who lived in Kenya. Um, anyway. And then he says, the former president is the most popular figure in the Democratic Party, and his campaign blitz was expected to inject a jolt of momentum in the final weeks of the race. Didn't help, it, it didn't help Hillary. No, it, 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 yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and um, yeah, I was, I was, you know, I was fascinated by these, by journalists and the use of cliches, like inject a jolt of momentum. They always write like that. Journalists always write with these kinds of cliches. Um, in the final weeks of the race. Because most journalists are a cliche. Go that's ahead. right. Exactly. Exactly. Capturing some of the energy that propelled his historic rise to the White House. So that was, that was now 16 years ago. I mean, you're still talking about that. That's what that happened 16 years ago. In 2012, already he didn't do so well. I mean, he was lucky to be up against um, Mitt Romney, um, but he lost votes. He he did worse in 2012 than he did in, in 2008. But it has also surfaced some weakness in Harris's own history-making effort. Oh, history-making effort. Whoa. Obama told volunteers. It, 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 it's history-making. See, don't don't see how you're being played right, right. here. Right. I mean. It, it it's an it's a an um inherent good that we have a history that's right thank you well, why that's right exactly why why indeed since he's the post-racial president right but you're right exactly why you want you want somebody as president who's who's going to be good at the job you're, you're not constantly oh i'm i'm, I'm making history here Corinne jean-pierre <laughs> i am yeah, that's right i am history <laughs> God I walk, bless her I soul. walk with history. She's so cute. God bless her. So I'm history. <laughs> Usually that phrase means you're out of here, but that's anyway. right. Yes, you're, you're right. I, I I am history. And why are you history? Well, because I'm black and I'm a lesbian. Whoa, that's it. That's it. That's history. Um Obama told volunteers that a lack of enthusiasm appeared to be, quote, more pronounced, unquote, among black men who will be key if she hopes to triumph over Donald Trump, especially in battleground Pennsylvania. We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw 
when I was running. But notice that our neighborhoods, our, what is this our uh, neighborhoods? He never lived in these neighborhoods. I mean, you know, this guy, you know. <laughs> and, you know, here we go again, everyone. It's so exhaustive. So they pull Obama out, drag him off one of his estates, nominally to support the party's nominee. But no matter what, George, it's always about Obama. Of course. When, of course. As we saw when I was running. Yes. It's always about yes. him. Yes. Yes, exactly. It, it, it is. Um, and, and that's right. And then he said, according to a video of the remarks posted on social media, he went on to make the case that Harris is someone who grew up like you. you know, it, the, the, the condescension is, is so, is so mind boggling. I mean, grew up like you. So like you, you know, he has this mass of people. First of all, she didn't. She actually, she lived, you know, very comfortably, you know, her, her father was a university professor. So was her mother, um, you know, so, you know, she may talk about, oh, I'm a middle-class kid. She wasn't, you know, she had, you know, actually had a very, very nice upbringing, you know, went to, you know, traveled a lot, you know, as a teenager. So, you know, but, oh, she grew up like you. Some, you know, these, uh, some, you know, uh, you know, the poor, yeah, poor yeah. blacks in uh, Philadelphia. What, what happened to this woman? I mean, I have met, when I was at university, I met people, their, both their parents were professors. And they were pretty smart too, <laughs> okay? I mean, it, it kind of worked together. That's a, that's a very good point. I, I, it's a very interesting, I, I wondered about that, that, that it's usually, un, you know, it, it's very unusual. Your parents are professors and then you're not really smart yourself. You may not be as successful as they are, but, but usually you'll be pretty smart. Um, well, typically, since you travel in those circles, right. okay, I mean, it, 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 when you travel in those circles, you may come to the realization that you're not as smart as the other people around right. you, but you, because you're in that environment, you're exposed to that, okay, right. and it usually makes you step up a little bit, right. doesn't it? But it didn't in this but it's, case. But, it, but that's a very interesting case, and, I, and I've and i never fully understood it. I mean, you know, her father's a professor at uh, Stanford. And yet, you know, she goes to Howard University and then she goes to the Hastings College of Law. And, you know, these are not, you know, the most prestigious even, colleges. You couldn't even pull the legacy thing. Exactly. That's what you thought. Look, your father's a Stanford professor. You know, you, you, know, you, yeah. walk, you walk into Stanford. I mean, that's, it should be, you know, be an open door um, to Stanford for you. Um, and then, um, and then here's uh, the Financial Times that says um, the headline: Barack Obama says black men's support for Trump is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. You can't. I'm, I'm just not accepting it. I'm sorry, but that's just. It's. I, 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 I mean, you know, I thought we were supposed to move away from tribalism, but it, you know, <laughs> is, is he the the king? You know, is he right. the, the the crown prince of of, yes. of, of men? Well, exactly. I think mean, he he feels that he speaks for all American blacks, and he has a right to berate American blacks when they don't do as they're told. Um, and then he says, well, you, "You know, but this is this is going to have the the ricochet effect. It's the, the people going to be more turned off." I think so. I absolutely think so. I think I think you know it's a, it's very strange i mean i think people don't like to be told what to do i think grown ups don't really I don't like think to a lot of black what... men like to be told no, what to do no i don't think they like to be told what to do and and they don't like to be called stupid and that's what, that's you know that's the way they are um um barack obama said black men's support for donald trump is not acceptable suggesting they were uncomfortable with a female candidate as the former Democratic president hit the campaign trail for Kamala Harris. Where is the evidence for that? There is no evidence for these claims. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, no you're evidence. on couple. Yes. You have an issue with women. And, you know, you know this how? So you can say that an entire group of people, millions of people, and they're all the same, apparently. They're all the same. Yeah. It's, inten it's intensely racist. I think so. I think so. Obama said in an unannounced stop 
at a Harris campaign office in the swing state of Pennsylvania that he had not detected the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. So, you know, I, I love this, the, all the we, 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 we. Um, and then he says, the problems seem to be more pronounced with the brothers. I love this, the brothers. You know, this, this, this is really, this is, I love this kind of talk. The brothers, you know, got, got, got to sound black. You know, you know the brothers. I mean, how could you uh, be brothers? He's half white. Yeah, no, that, that's right. Yeah, hey, these, these are these are my brothers. Um, uh, support. You see, again, all this is so phony. He was always a phony. I mean, whenever he went to, you know, before, particularly before a congregation in church, you know, he suddenly started, you know, talking like a preacher. You know, normally, you know, he would talk in this very, you know, normal, very crisp. Uh, way that he learned at Columbia or at Harvard, and then suddenly he would get before a church congregation, and he was, you know, sounding like a, a preacher, you know, like you know, as, as if he's Martin Luther King. Um, and so now he's talking about the brothers. I'm sure he talks about the sisters. You know, he's one of my sisters. Um, support for Trump, whom he said had denigrated, denigrated women, was not acceptable. You're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Hmm. He's got a problem. Um, Obama, the first American, African-American U.S. president, said hours before he was due to hold a rally for Harris um, in Pittsburgh. And it's then really interesting that he's, he's, he's uh, lecturing black men because Barack Obama would not have been elected president of the United States twice if it hadn't been for white people. That's right. That, that's it. That's exactly it. And that, of course, always undermined his claim that, of course, America is racist. I mean, that's the whole thing. He's been going on and on for years about uh, in, the incorrigible racism of Americans. Um, yet they voted for him overwhelmingly. The whites voted for him uh, twice uh, and showered him with lots and lots of money. I mean, he's a very he's a very wealthy man who does very little work. I mean, he doesn't really do anything very much other than just collects lots of money, you know, doing uh, speaking gigs. Then he's got this um, uh, thing in, in Hollywood. Um, so, he, you know, he's just rolling in money without doing any other sort of public service uh, activities that you would expect from former presidents. I mean, no Jimmy Carter, he... Uh, monitoring elections and generally a hundred years old, George. 100 years old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, and then he said, Obama said on Thursday that he was speaking to men directly, and they hit, and he said, It makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president, and you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. When we get in trouble and the system isn't working for us, they're the ones out there marching and protesting. Again, we and us, this is the us. You know, this is, this is the, the guy who, who went to Columbia, Harvard, then he went to, you know, uh, uh, you know get, get a nice little gig um, as, a, as a community activist and a constitutional law professor at the uh, <laughs> at, at, uh, in Illinois, um, so then so when we get in trouble and the system isn't working for us, they're the ones out there marching and protesting. So the women are out there marching and protesting. I mean, this is all—it's so condescending. I mean, the, this whole story is just oozes condescension. And now you're thinking about sitting out or supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a sign of strength because that's what being a man is putting women down that's not acceptable so you say saying that you know this is your um your think <laughs> I, I, I don't know I, did he ever practice constitutional law because the cause and effect in this paragraph is just it lands completely flat. I have no idea what you're talking about. That's right. That's I'm, right. I, 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 constitutional lawyer. That's right. I don't think he ever did. I mean, because the amazing thing is, 
that he never, never, never talked about the Constitution. He never talked about constitutional law. So he's always, oh, oh, you know, he's a professor of constitutional law for 12 years. Well, how come he's never talked about it? You know, not once has he ever talked about, you know, his understanding of the First Amendment or the Second Amendment or the Fourth Amendment. I mean, all, all the things you would expect a professor of constitutional law to have views about. Uh, but he never did. Now, what are you saying? And now you're thinking about sitting out or supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you. I think, I guess he's talking about Trump. But that really isn't true. Trump has never, I, I've never heard Trump denigrating blacks. He always had very good relations um, with, with blacks. Well, uh, you know. The sitting president has re uh, referred to men of color as boy, but Donald right. Trump, if he had ever done that, we right. would know about it. We would know about it. But again, when, when you look back on his career, you know, he, he was had all these friends in the entertainment world, you know, and, and even, you know, Al you know, Sharpton, they were exactly friends. Al Sharpton. That's right. You know, at least, you know, <laughs> the various figures in New York, he had uh, always had good relations with them. Um, history of denigrating you because you think that's a sign of strength. I, don't, I mean, again, you know, I just find it amazing that somebody can go over there to this audience and to insult them in this way. Oh, you, you know, you support somebody um, who has a history of denigrating you because you, stupid people that you are, you think that's a sign of strength. You think that's what a, being a man is? So then, you know, blacks are somehow identifying um, you know, the, the manhood with Trump. Um, putting well, women... Mean, again, again, uh, Barack Obama... Um, uh, gives the strong impression that uh, black men can't think for themselves. No, that's exactly. That's what this, when he's lecturing them like that, he's really calling them stupid. You know, pretty much they're just saying, yeah, you, you, this is what you are. You, you assume that what Trump does, that's being a man. What's the matter with you? You know, you think of something? Uh, putting, a, putting women down, that's not acceptable. Now, this is a, very strange. It's the very same day there's an article in Politico which says, I'm worried about turnout in Detroit. Dems move to shore up Harris's base in Michigan. I read this yesterday, yeah. Yeah. So the Harris campaign is dispatching surrogates to shore up support among black men. So right away, the moment you read this, you think, well, what happened to that, you know, the, the whole thesis that blacks are going to automatically vote for Harris because they think, oh, because her father is black, and that hasn't that hasn't worked. Um, that was a major, major miscalculation. Just to think, oh well, because oh, you know, her father is black, therefore blacks are automatically going to uh, show up for you. You know, in, in the, in the this is the expectation that whites have to uh, accept uh, the 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 content of your character argument, which right. I adhere to, and so does George. But black people shouldn't adhere to it. Right. Okay. No, that's it right. doesn't apply to black people. No, that's okay? exactly right. The content of your character doesn't. No, no, matter. no. I, you know, no, I don't care about content. I, 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 I got to, got to vote for somebody who's black. Exactly. I don't care about your content of your character. So it says Democrats are deploying prominent black surrogates to Michigan to deliver to deliver an urgent plea. Black men, we need you. You know, this is increasingly sounding pretty desperate. I mean, this is, you know, they're looking, they're obviously looking at their poll numbers. You know, they have their internal poll numbers and they're obviously not looking good. It's a concerted push involving the likes of uh, NBA Hall of Famer Magic Johnson, New York Attorney General Tish James. Oh, I'm sure they're, they're going to love Tish, you know, Tish James. Uh, Democratic Party elder Jim Clyburn. And then Gen Z representative Maxwell Frost, don't know who that is, and actress uh, Kerry Washington. So they're going to Detroit, and say, which is nearly 80% black, and the surrounding area, and it's the latest sign that the Kamala Harris campaign <coughs> and Democrats more broadly see trouble on the horizon. Harris has built up a small advantage in Michigan, but soft turnout among black voters could cause that lead to vanish in the face of a motivated Republican base. It happened in 2016. Right. No, that's that's exactly right. I mean, they, the blacks just didn't turn out for Hillary Clinton. 
Um, three dozen black Detroiters, including strategists, activists, clergy, elected officials, and likely voters, um, the vast majority of them men. So again, the, the men are obviously the, the bad guys, you know, um, told Politico about their concerns with the campaign's outreach to black voters. Some said their appeals come off as condescending. I, I would never have called it condescending. I didn't think anything that, that Obama said was condescending. Um, um, me down with a feather. Yeah. <laughs> others added that party officials and surrogates often question their intelligence if they inquire about how their lives will change under a Harris administration. <laughs> <laughs> they added that party officials and surrogates often question their intelligence, in other words, the intelligence of the, the black audience. If they inquire, these members of the audience, you know, they ask a very good question. If they inquire about how their lives, their the audience lives, will change under a Harris administration, you know, a reasonable question how will my life improve uh, if Harris is president? Well, and, they, and during the four years of uh, Trump, um, minus uh, COVID, all boats rose. All boats. That's right. That's right. That, 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 that's right. And Trump has a good answer to this question. I mean, he says, well, we're going to bring jobs back to America. You know, we're going to do this. You know, you can agree or disagree with that, but that's what he, he actually has an answer to that. Yeah, we're going to bring jobs back. We're going to put in tariffs. Uh, we're going to cut uh, migration into the country. So that was, you know, that will raise wages and no more cheap labor. That's an answer to the question. And then they ask Harris and you don't you're not able to give an answer other than call them stupid, which is what they're saying. Often question their intelligence and by and asking she, such a question. Yeah. And also that she had a middle class uh, upbringing. Okay. That, that's <laughs> I, the only I grew thing. up a middle class kid. The only thing I've been able to glean from this campaign. That's right. That's it. Others lament the campaign hasn't reached out enough uh, well-known grassroots organizations who hear firsthand about the apathy from black voters in marginalized neighborhoods like Belmont and Delray. And so then it goes on. Moreover, there is concern that messaging targeting black men is not being prioritized and that the campaign is favoring other core constituencies of the democratic base like suburban women. Because that's who Harris and the people around Harris identify with. That, that's, yeah, they don't really identify with blacks. You know, they the suburban women. Because they 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 identify with class and status. Exactly. Not with race. That's right. That's right. I mean, this is what makes the the, the Democratic Party this retrograde. Right. Okay. And and plus it they're they're messaging at they have messaging that are at cross purposes because we've had democratic um uh, i think it was schumer you know for every um um uh, white we lose we get 10 others okay i mean th this is at cross purposes they're, they're, they they have two messages coming out at the same time and it's it's and it's old it's stale george yeah, it is it, it is um because they they do this every single election every single election they go to the blacks and they prey you know on, on the blacks they they try to uh gin up fear among them oh my god you know the republicans are coming that means the kkk is coming um and, uh, put you and back in chains. exactly that was biden they're going to put you back in chains and, and they do this every time and and you know i think it has diminishing returns i mean you can't just keep coming up with the same line and expect the same response every four years no, George, no what you mean you know Again, the, the 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 black community is just this um, un, uh, um, uh, ha, ha, uh, uh, hajam, uh, right. it, What is the word? Homogeneous group right. of people. Well, right. they're members of the black community that are doctors and lawyers and accountants. Right. Okay, right. Uh, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, I think you know their success should inform us all that they can make decisions on their own. Right. You that's know? that. Yeah, that's that's really the, the the issue that, you know, ultimately, you know, people make their own decisions. They don't really like being condescended to. I just, you know, I just that's, you know, it's very, you know, they're odd like that. They don't really appreciate condescension uh, and to be told that they're stupid. And Obama did both. He condescended and he uh, called them stupid. Um.
I'm worried about turnout in Detroit. Uh, this is um, says uh, Jamal Simmons, a former communications director for the vice president and a uh, Detroit native. Yeah, but I think this is the same woman that quit um, the, the vice president's office. Okay. Well, I was wondering. I, I guess it's a man because it's Jamal. Um, okay. But, well, I mean, but but I think but, it's if it's former, you kind of why 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 former? I mean, why why aren't you still working for her? Um, do they have the machine to turn people out? There are concerns, and they're not insignificant. Yeah, because you know what, everybody? You need a machine to drive out the that's black right. vote. That's, yeah, it. that's, so, that's, that's, that's it, exactly it's like It's like hurting people. That's okay? right. That's, that's so, it. The, 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 it's, the, the condescension here is, 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 like, is a stench. That's of right. This. That, that, that's exactly, and that's the way the Democrats do it. You know, they... Bring out, you know, they that's it. Everybody get into the bus. Everybody, you know, we lay lay on, you know, one bus after another. Every, you know, everyone just herding them into the bus. Um, and then he goes, no, oh, that's it. So, um, what we can see here is considerable concern on the uh, the part of the Democrats that this that their plan, the Harris plan, isn't working. Because ultimately, you know, what what if if they even lose, say, you know, twenty percent of the black men vote for Trump, that's a that's a serious blow. I mean, that, don't that, that's a real all. blow to them. Or don't vote at all. Oh, they, exactly. Or don't vote at all. And that and that that was what did in Hillary Clinton. If they just simply don't show up, you know, and you know, I, I think people are not going to show up. I mean, there's just no enthusiasm for Harris. And you can't, you know, just saying, oh, I I'm a middle class kid, and oh, I I celebrated Kwanzaa. Which nobody, no, no, no. This is entirely a media creation. Kwanzaa, you know, no, no American black ever celebrates Kwanzaa. Uh, but you know, oh well, I, I remember celebrating Kwanzaa at home. It's it's so phony. It just you know, it, you know, is it, it cannot work. And same with when Hillary Clinton. I mean, she did that yeah. whole you know. You remember her? She would her voice would do that sing song. She would also try to say you know, trying to sound like Martin Luther King. It oozes phoniness and it turns people off. The, one of the gross miscalculations here is that we want to introduce you to Kamala Harris. Well, I think if you introduce her to a lot of black men, they're going to say, why in the world would I vote for someone like that? Yeah, you think right. I'm really that stupid? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's so trans. This candidacy is so transparently transactional. I mean, it's just... I mean, uh, uh, it, this is a black pill election here. Right. I mean, and the, the amount of manipulation and lying. I mean, Georgia, it was like only six seconds ago, she was a national joke, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly well, right. And then, you well, know. Well, what is it then? That's right. That's right. And, we, and we saw, um, I mean, you probably saw it as well, when she was asked a very basic question on, I think it was on The View. She goes on on, on this view and and would say, well, <clears throat> you know, um, you know, you know, how, how would you have done anything differently from uh, President Biden? And she was unable to answer that question. Um, and you would have thought she or her handlers would have prepared her for this question because there's bound to be a question: How are you different from Biden? You, since you're trying to sell yourself as the agent of change, I'm the change candidate. They all do this, the change kind of everything. Bill Clinton invented this change. I'm I'm for change, you know, change to what, but just change. And she's unable to answer that. Um, and then subsequently she was asked that exactly the same question by um Colbert, you know, a few hours later, you thought, well, well, by now she would have a better answer to that question. And she said, Well, I'm a different person uh from Biden. Um, and that's my they're different. You know, I I'm I'm not. Joe Biden. Well, that's it. That that's uh, that answers my question. You are physically a different person. You know, Joe Biden is a white man. You are not a white man. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, he's eighty years old. You're sixty years old. Well, that's it. That 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 answers my question. You know, you're well, obviously also, a different person. One thing that has not been taken into account: the, 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 both campaigns have been awful in this election cycle. But one thing you. The, the Democrats and all the pundits and you know uh, handlers and all well paid is that Donald Trump was president. Right. Where was his racism? Right. When? 
I mean, I, they, 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 don't, they don't talk about, they just say he is, but he was president for four right. years. Right. You know, um, um, who was his um, um, HUD uh, secretary? Um, um, was State? It, was, oh. it, was it um, the black surgeon? Um, oh, uh, Carson, Ben Carson. Ben Carson, okay. Which I, I think is, you know, if, if, if you... If someone told, said to me, Peter, I mean, who do you safe hands? I'd say Ben Carson would be a good president. Okay. Because you know, right. he's smart. Okay. Right. Very smart. Okay. And he's very straightforward. Okay. I mean, he did run for president. Right. Um, but, you know, again, you know, Ben Carson isn't black for them. That's the, the problem. No, that's but, you know, and, and as George just pointed out, we're looking at the thinnest of margins. Okay. So you think, all black people live in the ghetto, right. okay? And right. they're all un, uh, 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 unemployed, they're uneducated. Right. I mean, th 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 that is an affront to the black community, right. okay? Right. It's, it, because there are super successful black people across right. every single but, but, aspect. But that, you're, you're, you're right, and of course, it just shows how dumb the Democrats have been because they should have seen already from 2016 that Trump had a certain appeal uh, for blacks and particularly black men. I mean, that's that's a longstanding issue that, you know, actually black men kind of liked him. They liked, you know, his swagger. They liked that he was an entrepreneur. Um, he, they liked the fact that he talked straight. So they haven't even, they haven't done anything really to address that issue, how to, um, you know, reduce the appeal of uh, of Trump to, to blacks. And now they find themselves, you know, in a lot of trouble, you know, in, instead of, you know, seeing, hey, we've got to do something about that. They, they put in the worst possible candidate, Harris, who's just making explicitly a pitch. Well, um, I'm black and you're black. So therefore you have to vote for me. It didn't work in 2016. I mean, well, why, I mean why do they think they would work now? If, if you're going to invoke the uh, masculinity issue, like uh, uh, denigrating, say you're not man enough. You right. don't have enough masculinity. Right. You know, there'll be black men say, "I I like the mascul uh, masculinity." Right. Donald Trump, right. okay? Right. They like that. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people like it. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He, 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 he the man's man. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's it. And that, uh, and that and that was really. Uh, you know, obvious, and so they haven't really done anything about it. And instead of that, you got you know essentially Obama whining and saying, "Oh, well, you know, why, why are you like that? Why are you doing that?" But you know, that's it. They, they, they like that. They like that. You know, the uh, Trumpian swagger. They like you know his plain speaking, and uh, and you know he's a successful businessman. You know, you know, a lot of people kind of admire that that he's a successful well, also, George, entrepreneur. It, it might be a reach on my part, but I, I, my gut tells me, they see black men, they see how the system is attacking Donald Trump, right. no, trying to knock him down, push him down, push right. him out. If, if, if that, that message may resonate with a lot of black men saying, yeah, I know what that's like. Oh yeah, I'm, I know what that's like. I know what the system can do. That's right. I'm, again, it just ricochets around. Right, no, that, that's, that's absolutely right. Um, and you know they saw what what you know how the system has uh, uh, treated her. There's also the other aspect of uh, Harris, which is I think blacks do ask that. Well, what has she actually done for blacks? I mean, when you know throughout her career, and they say, well, she was a DA um, in uh, San Francisco. Right away, that's going to set off you know alarm bells among blacks. Oh, he was she was a DA. Uh, oh, then she was Attorney General of California. Oh, really? Um, you know. We're supposed to identify with her because she was a DA and then an attorney general. I don't think so. I think that, that would be the sort of person. Like, I think I'm going to stay away from her. You know, prosecutors are not good people. They're not. They're not. They're not the people who I I want to identify with. Absolutely. And yeah. Kamala Harris is the system. Yeah. Exactly. She represents the system. She was invented by the system. She was brought up through the system. Right. And 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 coronated. Um, yeah. You know, that's not, in my opinion, um, you know, considering my generation, that that's not success. No. Okay, Excellent. it's like you know, I'm sure all of you, you know, seen rich kids that seem to get so many advantages. Okay, just because they're rich. Okay, yep. Yep. not because yep. of their merit. Okay, right. it, it is irritating. Okay, it, it is. I know very much. Elevated, 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 elevated. <laughs> exactly. 
part, you know, the machine, the system, powerful, important people who pushed her career. I mean, how how does somebody, you know, that young just get to be DA, you know, run for office as DA well, in San and, Francisco? And, uh, a patently evident um lacking in much intelligence. It, exactly. Okay. Exactly. How you know, you know, you think surely there are a lot of, you know, must be a lot of very bright people uh, who could who could have done that job better. No, obviously powerful important people were pushing her career. And then California Attorney General, I think again, really that's the best you've got. That's the best uh, you know, legal mind you've got in California. So think that they they look upon her and she's not appealing and that's that's a serious problem when you got essentially the people don't like you. They, they, you know, then that was the problem with Hillary Clinton. People didn't like her. You know, you can you can attack Trump all you want, but if people don't like you, then that's it. You know, you're done. This may sound petty. Oh, it is petty. I just can't stand her voice. No, no, that's good. It's <laughs> that nasal. Sound. Yeah, the nasal. I, why? Why does she do the nasal? I, I, it's it's very. It's very annoying when people do the nasal. Or I mean, it's it's a it's a particular habit of some people. They do this you know do this nasal thing, and it's and it's really really annoying. Uh, it the nasal, and then she has this other thing. It's not just the laughter, um, but it's laughing at her own comments. I mean, if you she laugh at somebody else's, joke. yeah, that's right. If you laugh at somebody else's jokes, okay, that that's fine. But if you're laughing at your own jokes. Um, that's really annoying. Yeah, that that's really grating when when people do that. Um, and you laugh at something that you just said, as if as if we're all supposed to accept that what you said was really funny. Uh, it's 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 just really annoying. Yeah, anyone, and you're supposed to laugh with the person that's making the joke, right? Yes, okay. but but that but that's the thing. And 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 you if you 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 watch her sometimes with when she does these. Um, uh, conversations like she did with um, uh, what was it? Uh, Steve Jobs's uh, uh, wife, a widow, uh, who's a very big, who's a big shot among Democrats. I mean, she makes a lot of money, um, and she's she's she was doing that. She was saying, "Oh, we need to be woke. We need to be woker and wokest." And then she starts laughing, and then you just watch the face of um jobs's wife she's completely unsmiling you know she she has no idea what the hell are you on about i i don't i don't why why am i supposed to find this funny that you know we need to be woke woker and wokest but that and that's the response she, she says these ridiculous things then she starts laughing and then expects everyone else to join in the laughter and so just you know so just you know, just watch her face is kind of bemused well, I mean, it, about, that, what, what the hell are you on about but that's just that's a nervous laugh. That's a, yeah, I mean, that, that, but that's, that's, I that's mean, in you, itself. You're right. It's a nervous laugh, but it's very annoying. I mean, just because it's nervous, so that's, that doesn't make it any less annoying. Well, it means it, it, you know you you don't really have much more to say. You just want like change the subject. It is it's a pivot somehow. Um, um, and and you know let's have instead of talking seriously, let's have a good chuckle. Okay, uh, right. again, but it's also yeah that that is a, but I think it's an attempt to get others. To join in the laughter because well, like, and, and if you're laughing, you like it, right? Okay. That's right. You see, because if you're if you laugh, you're kind of persuading somebody else. Hey, this is really funny. You know, you got to laugh. I mean, I mean, you can you can actually always watch in, in any kind of group of people. One person starts laughing, then another person starts laughing, and then the third and the fourth. They don't know what they're laughing at, but it's 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 something that spreads uh, in the audience. Yeah, I mean, the juxtaposition is like J D Vance. And J.D. Vance, you know, I've been following his career uh, from the very beginning. He's a very serious guy. He's right. a serious guy. He's a deep thinker. Um, he's he's very modest in many <laughs> ways. But when he does laugh, it's very infectious. Right. Okay, it is it it is very genuine. He's not a laughing guy. He's no. he's actually a, a very pensive person. Right. But when he does break out with that a, a that big grin and a smile, you know, it's infectious. People like it but, right. but, because it's organic. It's organic. But that's it. But it, it's also, you know, I think one of the endearing qualities of um, Trump is that Trump is actually very funny. I mean, when he starts yes. riffing and he starts starts telling anecdotes and jokes, they're very funny. He doesn't laugh at his own comments, yes. so he does the you know like a, a good comedian. You you talk seriously, but it's just very funny, and other people are laughing. He himself isn't laughing at what he's saying. Uh, well, and you know, George and I are students of of Trump speak, and when he starts telling a story, 
it's kind of like get settled in your seat. Exactly. <laughs> it's coming. Okay. All right. What's he up to now? That's okay. Right. I mean, yeah. it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. You, it, you, yeah. It's a, it, I don't know how aware of it he is, but just like I said, when you, yeah. you know it's starting, you sit right. down and right. absorb this right. one. It's very, yeah. it's genuine and it's very, it, it's um attract. It's very attracting. Right. You right. want to lean into it. You That's lean right. into That's it. That's right. Yeah, I remember what he, what he said. It was just so, so funny. He said, "Well, you know, all these illegal migrants are coming across the border, and right away, you know, they're getting uh, free phones, and then they get to stay in a hotel." He said, "Would you like to stay at the Grand Hyatt, or would you like to stay at the Trump Plaza?" <laughs> he says, "Would you like to stay at the Trump Plaza?" <laughs> He just says this, you know, seriously, and everybody, the whole audience, just breaks into laughter. We saw this in the twenty twenty election. Um, but when he's on, you know, when, uh, when the stage is being prepared for him to to speak, you know, and they always make it a little late to create right. a little yeah. bit of tension, anticipation, yeah, yeah. it's a formula. And then the music is blaring and right. he comes out in his fat old man <laughs> dancing, which he pulls off for some reason. Right. OK, yeah. because Theresa May couldn't do it. OK, right. I mean, Hillary Clinton, I don't want to see it. OK, right. Nancy Pelosi, shoot me now. Okay, right, exactly. but here's this guy. He's got a gut on him. Okay, yeah, that's right. Gut, that's right. Okay, and he because the thing is, is that he can laugh at himself. Exactly, he's oh, making fun of himself. All right. these other people, they cannot laugh at themselves. No, exactly. No that's right. Exactly, he's laughing at something. Exactly, because he knows it's kind of funny. The the whole idea of this elderly man, uh, you know, swinging his arms around, and that people just love it because it is just so funny. He's not. He, he doesn't think that he can dance. Uh, he's well, not pretending you know why he does it, George? Because that's how most people dance. Right, exactly. And people instantly identify. That's me. That's me <laughs> up on the stage. Okay, <laughs> it's not some Hollywood buxom star that is so right. crafted and all that. No, he's a he's a slob just like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. And the, and um, to, but Teresa May thought that he she could dance, and that was why it was so grating. Is that she actually thought she could dance? And 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 why it just became so obnoxious and people really detested it. But she actually, hey, I got, I can dance. You know, let me let me show show you my moves. And she doesn't have any moves. She shouldn't have done it. And uh, <laughs> people just really hated it. When when I saw it, I just said, whoa, whoa, whoa! You're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're gonna hurt somebody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You know. If if you if you can't dance, don't dance. Other than you know, if you're just going to make fun of yourself, but don't but don't try and do it. You know you, you know it's a, oh. dancing is a very specific. It's like singing. If you can't sing, don't sing because it's really grating to listen to someone who can't sing. I'm I'm very pessimistic about this election cycle. However, I think that um, Kamala Harris serves another purpose here, and she's a foil um, because uh, Trump's campaign uh, style his delivery uh we may never see it ever again i i i i, it's, I think this will be if he, he loses obviously he's not going to run again no um but you know you're, you're going to go back to this really kind of polished uh, vacuous vapid right. uh campaign style which is what kamala harris is i mean she's right. the most vapid of all right. time right right but you know donald trump's you know they're they're eating bats they're eating <laughs> That's it, exactly. That, that's you can it. watch that a thousand times, okay? <laughs> now, I don't know if it was a particularly good idea to do it, but what I'm just saying... I, I think it, it worked for him. It got, it got okay. everyone talking about him. I think that, that was, that's what everyone remembers from that debate. You know, it's, that's it, what people can remember for this whole... That, that thing. That's what people can remember for this entire campaign. That's right, the, 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 the dog lamb. And, that, and Trump knows that. I mean, you know, he's very, you know, he's been in the media all his life. He's been a kind of a self-promoter all his life. He knows... What uh, clicks with people? He just knows that you know, what people remember. Um, they're not going to remember, you know, policy speeches or anything like that. But you make something like they're eating dogs, they're eating the cats, they're eating the pets <laughs> that, that live there. You, 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 you said it in our last podcast about that. You said that in our last podcast, and he even had an, a cadence. Yeah, cadence. exactly. They're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats, they're eating the pets that are that live there. It's, it's like it's. <laughs> Because everyone was then looking up and everyone's now, you know, trying to find out, well, what the hell's going on in Springfield, Ohio? Uh, so. <laughs> anyway, anyway um, um, 
Yeah, the Democratic Party. Yeah, yeah you're in a, you're in deep shit. I mean, you made it yourself. You know, either you're, you know, it's all race or it's post race or you mean make up your mind, right. okay? Because these are these are um, um, contradictory messages that you're sending, and then you send send out Obama Rama drama, right. and that and this is what you get. Right. Uh, the man is a walking contradiction. Okay, right. Right. I mean, America is, is uh, systemically racist. It made you a very famous rich man. Right. How did that happen? That's right. no, you're, you're, you're exactly right. And and what Obama's doing here is really the worst possible thing because, you know. If you're really going to try and make a pitch at this stage, you you want to make a pitch, uh, which she's been trying to do to, to the center. You know, all well, I'm the center. You know, I'm not. You know, I'm not a very sort of narrow sectarian. You know, trying to um, appeal to very uh, niche voters. I'm I'm the moderate. I'm the I'm I'm the person who can appeal to uh, all sorts of people. But instead of that, Obama goes in there and says, "Hey." Blacks, what the hell is the matter with you? You've got to turn out for her. That's just, you know, people are going to watch that and it's just going to annoy them. Uh, it's not going to uh, uh, appeal to the blacks. And it's not going to appeal to whites because that, that's exactly the wrong uh, well, message. If, if, if she is uh, the winner, meaning the person that is inaugurating, being, winning and inaugurating can be different things, everyone, okay? Uh, and it might turn into a pattern. Um, I think she's going to be... Uh, a, a, a extremely unpopular president from I think so. Yeah, I I, 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 I agree. Day. I think I agree. I think it's uh, um because certainly we, we could talk about uh, another time the um the case of um, Keir Starmer. It's a hundred days since he's we uh, predicted this one. Yeah, oh, we got, you know, we hit that exactly record unpopularity. Um, you know, that, you know, amazing, just a, a collapse in support. And exactly, we, we predicted it. It will be very much the case uh, with her. Um, and, uh, you know, basically, she's pretty, she, her campaign is fake. I mean, she's completely running on a totally different uh, program she was running on in 2019 and 2020. And she's getting away with not getting any probing questions about how the hell did you change all of your position? Not this, you know, oh, well, I changed my mind on fracking. Every single thing that you advocated four years ago is now different from what you're saying now. How come? And and uh, and so, you know, with that, I think again, that's adding to her um, unpopularity because she hasn't explained George, George, how she has changed her mind. George, George, think of the the uh, consultants around her. Think about how much they're being paid. Yeah, I don't right. want to make you angry or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 so how, why did you change your position on fracking? Well, the technology has changed. Right. Uh, they've found ways to make it more econo economically right. viable and ecologically right. friendly. I just said that, George. Right. right. But the thing on is- On the view, uh, you could have said that on the view. Right, you could have. You could have. But the, the things that is going to be difficult for her, I mean, you know, she wanted to decriminalize Im illegal um, uh, immigration in 2019-20. Now, now she's going to be. She's the tough, tough guy. You know, she wants to build a wall. You know, that's that's a more difficult one. There are a lot of things that basically that she was advocating that you can't do, and there's no there are no there are no good answers uh, for that. And I think that's but, uh, the the interesting thing here, and this has been written about in the last few days, is that she's um, uh, slowly but surely. Um, uh, hijacking a lot of uh, Trump's yeah. uh, agenda. Right. Kamala Harris, the problem is with you doing that is that only Trump knows how to present that agenda because right. of his persona, because right. of his political instinct. Right. Okay. You just, you know, you, these people think, oh, do you just have to say this? Yeah. No, right. you, when there, it, 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 it comes out so uh, false and fake. Yeah. And, you know, even though George and I disagree with Trump on so many different things, he does have a way of, of delivering his message that the messaging in the Democratic Party is a mess. Right. No, I think. It's, but that's the, the problem is for Harris is which and I don't know how, you know, she it was should have been obvious to those the party uh, elders who inserted her is 2019, 2020. She's in her mid 50s. She's kind of running as the, the 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 leftist candidate. Now she's going to run as the kind of a neo-Trumpian. You 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 just simply can't do that. I mean, you know, again, you know, 
you know, I mean, it's not like, well, this is what she believed in her 20s. And now she has a different set of views. That's fine. You know, you, you've changed your mind, you know, over a course of many years. But here in the course of four years, you've changed your mind on every single thing. That that that's an awkward one, and it should have been obvious to Obama, Pelosi, and the rest of them that you're not going to be able to explain that away. George, you're taking all the joy out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Um, the good news is um, um, the election day is almost here, and that means we can only hope, maybe pray, is that we won't see Barack Obama again for another four years. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. If you really want to, you know, put, put a dower on the day, think of Barack yeah. Obama. That'll do yes, it for you. Yes, exactly. All right. I think we've uh, squeezed as much out of this one as we can. All right. This is the Gaggle with Peter and George. We're on locals, so please go to thegaggle.locals.com. This is Friday. George and I will do a wrap on uh, weekly wrap on Sunday, which usually is a kind of a marathon one, and then we have a live stream on Monday. Live stream Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Then on Tuesday, uh, it's a solo, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, now comes the uh, the difficult part, and this is uh, the buddy situation because buddy really is, you know, he's very it's the buddy brief. The buddy, yeah, brief. the buddy brief. You know, he's saying, look, this is no good. I, you know, I I I'm, I work a year and a day, but he says, you know, trying to you know put together a podcast, and I don't get any rewards for it. You know, what's everyone else doing? And so, um, you know, if you have a few bob in your pocket, um, you know, shekels or drachmas or euros, um, then, you know, whip them out, um, dunk them in the, uh, the tip jar. It might put him into a, uh, a more positive uh, thinking uh, frame of mind. Uh, we're very grateful for all of your help, friendship and support. The more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make the more we can improve the technology and we might get um, dogs who actually will be you know, in a better mood. Uh, so remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share and subscribe. See you soon. Bye-bye.